morning, Faith Lutheran. I'm Shay Turner. And I'm Marcello Blanco. Thank you for joining us. Stakes are high this year for the men's across. Today we're going to be finding out what students' we're favorite classes are. There's a conspiracy theory floating around about the authenticity of these stores. Good morning, Faith Lutheran. I'm Shay Turner. And I'm Marcello Blanco. Thank you for joining us for today's broadcast. With a new year comes new development at Faith Lutheran, and Carson Hirsch got the newest information on the land purchase across the street from Homestretch. This is Carson Hirsch from FLNN. Faith Lutheran has recently purchased the lot across the street. Today we're going to go around, seeing why they purchased it, and what they're going to build there. Did you know that we recently bought a lot across the street from the school? No, I didn't. I did. Since we did, what do you think they will build? I think that they will build another building to help maybe the STEM or business academies. Well, I'm sure they're going to build an administration building, hopefully more parking. If you could have anything built to benefit the school, what would you want? Um, I would want something that can help all parts of the school and help all academies. A swimming facility. <laughs> the vacant lot is located across from the street home stretch. It is 10 acres big, and with Faith Lutheran's purchase of it, the campus is supposed to expand to become a 49-acre campus. Faith plans to completely eliminate the road in the future, which is estimated to cost $1.8 million. What was the lot across the street purchased? Uh, we purchased a lot in 2014. Uh, then it took us a couple years uh, to get permission to kind of close down the street. Do you know what is going to be built over there? So right now they're going to start building an administrative building right on the corner of Hualapai and Homestretch. Tennis courts on there at some point, um, an aquatic center, and then a lot of parking. Mr. Fogo said that the administrative building is supposed to be built a year after the street closes in 2019. Everything else depends on donations, so make sure you donate. This is Carson Hirsch. See you next time. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Carson. Our next story gives an inside look into what it takes to be a Mark 1014 mentor with Holly Edgington. Hi, I'm Holly Edgington from the FLNN. Today we are interviewing Mark 1014 mentors on their experience and advice for incoming mentors next year. Mark 1014 is a class for students with intellectual needs. Students have a choice as one of their electives to help these students and be a big part of their learning life here at Faith Lutheran. These students apply and are chosen to be a mentor for the kids. They help them in their classes and get them to where they need to be. Here are some of the mentors and their experience with the students. Why did you choose to be a mentor? Uh, I thought it was really cool. Like I just saw like some of my friends do it and I just thought it would be something really special to do. To help kids and just have fun with them. The mentors help in a ton of different ways. They help the students in their classrooms. Um, so if they get some work that's too hard, our mentors just help them simplify it. I chose to be a mentor because both my sisters did it and my mom worked in the program and they all had good experiences. What qualities are needed when being a mentor? Uh, definitely patience and just like the joy of helping people. I think the qualities of being a mentor is having patience and just wanting to have the drive to just help them. We look for people who are compassionate and kind and we look for people who um, we can count on to do what we ask them to do. I think you just need to be an outgoing person because you really have to put yourself out there and connect with the kids. And what is one of your favorite memories with the kids? Uh, I just like seeing uh, my kid Chris laugh or whatever, just like for something like it just makes me happy, just seeing him happy. Teaching them and helping them. Probably just the overall like connection you make with the kids and the friendships that you make through it. For next year, do you have any advice for people who are going to be applying? I would say just if, if it's something that you've ever thought about doing, go ahead and give it a try. Just be outgoing and show that you really want to be a part of the program. As you can see, these mentors love what they do. Make sure to get your applications in soon. I'm Holly Edgington, back to you in the studio. Thank you, Holly. So Marcello, it's second semester of senior year. You know what that means? No, I don't. That means it's time for seniors to start making their final college decisions. And Liam Radkovich talked to counselors and students about common misconceptions Southern Nevada students make when making their final college decisions. Have you ever wondered where students from faith go once they graduate? Between sports and academics, there's so many different wonderful schools to choose from. To catch a glimpse of where some students go, we went around and asked this year's graduating senior class. Uh, did you get accepted to the school you wanted to for next year? Uh, yes, I did. I actually actually got accepted yesterday. Uh, that school is Idaho State. 
Boise State. Um, University of Arizona, University of Utah, and the University of Pittsburgh. I want to go to the University of Miami, you know, the U. After going around and asking this year's senior class where they planned on going next year, one thing became apparent. None of them planned on staying in state. And the question came up, why? To figure out how many kids actually end up staying in state, we went and talked to Mr. Chilman. What percent of kids stayed in state last year? Last year it was 59, so just under 30 percent. Okay, and why do so many kids end up staying in the state of Nevada? Number one reason is the price, because it's really inexpensive to do so. Secondary reason, they're really good schools, even though a lot of people think they're not. And then the third reason would be they want to go on to grad school, and so they really don't care where they go for their undergrad to a degree. So, seniors, if you're still trying to figure out where to go next year, it turns out that staying in state isn't such a bad option after all. This is Liam Radovich from FLNN. Thank you, Liam. Don't forget today there's both a middle school and high school hockey game at City National Arena at 4 and 6.30. Also, Sadie's tickets went on sale Monday, so get them before Monday, January 14th at the low price of $25. For DFLNN, I'm Marcel Blanco. And I'm Shay Turner. God, God bless. bless.